everyone. I'm Zhang Yang from the Institute of Applied Physics and Computational Mathematics. I'm very honored here to present our work, Fast Modeling of Network Contention in Batch Point to Point Communications by Packed Level Simulation with Dynamic Time Stepping. So, I will first introduce some background of this work, and then uh, a packed level contention model with flow approximation. And uh, after that, I will introduce a fast packed level simulator with dynamic time stepping. And after that, we will have experimental evaluation and finally conclusion and future works. So, uh, the, motiv the main motivation of our work is about communication bottlenecks. As we know, communication performance has long been a bottleneck for parallel applications. As we can see from the DOE Exascale report in 2011, that the fraction of time spent in communication can increase to up to 60% of, 60 of uh, the total applica application time. And we can also see from our own exper experiment that if we increase the processor count from tens of cores to uh, hundreds of thousands of cores, the fraction of communication can increase up to 80% and hurts the parallel efficiency. Uh, another point in this work is about batch point-to-point -to -point communications. As we see, Major parallel applications exhibit the BSP way of parallel computing, that they often the separate the communications and the computations. In the com in the computation stage, every process do their own work, but in the communication stage, every process may send messages to every other process. So the the messages are carried out in a batched manner as point to point messages. And we can also find out from literature that point-to-point -point communications contribute to over 80 per, over 90 percent of CSE applications. For batch point-to-point -point communications, network contention can be very serve. Eventually, network contention is a major source of communication bottleneck on modern HPC. As we can see from literature, when messages compete for network resources, the link contention can increase message latency by up to a factor of eight times. And we use topology-aware mapping to elevate the contention. And for batch communications, they are more likely to cause contention than on their own. So it is very important to be able to model the network contention quantitatively, as it can help with us to evaluate the contention in a given communication pattern and to find a good process mapping and find a way to schedule messages to reduce contention. So what is the state of art in contention modeling? There are two main categories. The first is the network simulator. The second is an analytical model. For net network simulator, we have codes, SST, omelets, and others. And they model the network in detail, and they are known to be very accurate in contention modeling. And for, and they, they are also known to have very high model cost, at least to the order of total packets, and not easy to parallelize efficiently. The other end is an analytical model, and the most famous would be the NAGP family. And they model only the point-to-point -point messages and very raw on contention, but they have very low con modeling cost only to the order of total messages and very easy to parallelize efficiently. But for to model the network contention of batch point-to-point -point messages on very large-scale parallel computers, we need to be both accurate and have no modeling cost, so neither approach are adequate. And what we do in this work is to propose a network contention model to combine the best part of network simulators and analytical models. And we also propose a packed level network simulator with dynamic time stepping 
to accelerate the simulation multiple orders of magnitudes. And we also verify by experiments that these approaches can quantify lateral contention in both synthetic benchmarks and application traces in an accurate yet fast way. So we now introduce the packed level contention model. So we believe that a network contention model can be both accurate and fast. If you model the network and in instead of the message, you can be accurate. And if the model can be appro approximated with a flow model, it can be fast. So the key idea of our work is to simplify on the idea of lateral simulation by keeping only the major parts that contribute to network contention. That we simulate the message flows at a packet level, we assume a packet will occupy exclusively a link, and we imitate the end-to-end -end congestion control mechanism by implement, implementing message failures. So the, for the overview of the packet model, it models the network as the NICs plus switches plus links. And we assume static, static topology and static routing. And we keep the real topology and the routing of a given network. And the messages go through the network by unit of fixed sized packets. But the unusual parts of, of this model is that each NIC and a switch is not a real NIC or switch. It is a, way, a virtual NIC and a virtual switch. Quite different from the real one. So what is a virtual switch and a virtual NIC? So virtual NIC is essentially a virtual switch with only one output port and no input port. So, and it has infinite packet buffer for all messages. So for the virtual switch on the right hand side, the, the virtual switch has input ports and outputs as a regular switch. But internally, it does not have per port buffers Instead, it has per flow buffers. It has a fixed sized per message a packet buffer for each flow that passes through the switch. And each output is associated with multiple flow buffers. And it schedules each flow buffer, these flow buffers, in a rod roaming manner. And at, at most, one packet can move forward in one output port. And one, one packet can move forward if and only if the downstream buffer is not full. So here comes two examples. The first example is a switch with four, a single switch with four messages. The so AB come from the same input port and go to the same output port. The CD uh, can come from different uh, input ports and and different output ports. And here we can see that for very large messages, the, allo the bandwidth allocation for can eventually be the same as the max mean fairless bandwidth allocation. And for another example of two switches and four messages, it has the, the same conclusion. So from this observation, we, we may think that can this can our model be equivalent to the max mean fearless model? Yes. <coughs> so the unique feature of this model is it is equivalent to the max mean fearless flow allocation for very large messages. This comes from the, this theorem that a large sliding window at the source plus fair curing in the nodes implements max mean fearless. And the virtual NIC implements inf infinite large sliding window at the source and the robin round robin scheduling at output ports even implements fail curing. So what is the benefit of being equivalent to maximum fearless flow allocation? That we can eventually compute the average the average bandwidth for each message by the water filling algorithm uh, used in maximum fearless flow allocation. So the cost of the, of this calculation is only to the square of the message count. It is agnostic of the message size. So this means that this model is upper bounded. The cost of this model is upper bounded by the by a flow model. For small mes messages, the packet is, the packet count is small, so the cost is not a question. 
for very large messages. The cost is agnostic of the message size, so the cost is would not be very high. So now we will introduce our packed level si simulator with dynamic time stepping. So the idea of the simulator is to simulate the proposed network model. Uh, in, so the key idea is that we can simulate the network model, the network in a knock step manner and not by discrete event simulation. And we can also accelerate the simulation by approaching the maximum fairness in case of large messages. So the overview of this simulator is, is in this picture. It has three paths, the send host, the network, and the receive host. So the simulator progresses in knock steps. In each knock step, at every output port tries to move one packet forward to the next flow buffer. So by the same round robin scheduling approach, and the round robin scheduling. And the messages are segmented into packets at the send host. So uh, being a packet level simulator, it can be very costly for large messages. Fortunately, an R model can be approached by the flow model. So how to make use of this fact? So the key idea is that when the network reaches a stable state, so uh, this means the flows are stable, we increase the packet size to reduce time step. We can constantly increase the packet size. So the concrete method is we check the message, check the network for stabilis every, uh, every n steps and double the packet size if the network is stable. And we, can ha we also halve the packet, the packet size if the network is not stable. The minimal packet size is MTU and the, the max packet size is one tenth of the message size. So how do we check a stabilis? Uh, it's very simple. It's uh, injecting packages uh, of uh, minus outgoing packets is <coughs> uh, the difference is very small. So what is the effect of this dynamic time stepping? So the effect is uh, is that we can increase the MTU <coughs> exponentially and and then decrease the simulation run the, the steps needed in the simulation exponentially. So eventually we can see in this picture that we can reduce the simulation steps up to three orders of magnitudes for very large messages. We so effectively obtain the benefits of a priori bandwidth allocation by water filling algorithm. And yet we are very flexible enough to count for mixed sized messages. And to have batch, batch messages with small, both small and large messages. So the final contention simulator uh, Com computes the transfer time of each message of four, three, four, five parts, the, the CPU overheat, the NIC overheat, the transfer time, and the receive overheat, okay, and also the NIC delay. And we also have, have all these parameters in the simulator, like the MTU, the effective link bandwidth, the switch delay, and the overhead of the segmentation message, the flow buffer size, and the concurrent messages for NIC, and the network state checking criteria. So, for the for the overall message independent host side overhead and the overhead to segment a message, we we eventually fit them by comparing the simulated time and the measured time uh, with some point-to-point -point benchmark. <coughs> so now we'll show some experimental results. The first we have to see here is that the simulator is only a serial implementation based on time stepping, and we implement it in, with pure Python. So the speed is not good at the moment. We have several, several tuning parameters, such as a time step to check for stability. The simulator runs on the regular workstation with Intel CPU and 12 gigabytes of memory. Uh, for the 
experiment for the real experimentation, we use a cluster of over 400 computed nodes connected by Omnipass 100 gigabytes network. And the benchmarks are implemented in MPI and runs on OpenMPI 3.1. And we compare the results with SimGrid 3.21. And the first is a single message. So the, for, best, for basics, point-to-point -point single message from node A to node B, our simulation pr pr provides uh, accurate results comparable to the measured results and obtain similar results to that of same grade. And we can see that a dy dynamic time stepping can obtain significant speed improve over for large messages. Now, we, we will show the all to all communication pattern, which is known to cause network contention. Now, every node sends a message to every other node. Then we also we still obtain very accurate result compared to that of measured results, and 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 for that of same grade, it of the result of same grade uh, is much lower than the real time, so we we have better accuracy, and we can also see that the dynamic time stepping here can ob obtain up to three orders of magnitudes speed up compared to fixed time stepping, and the simulation time steps required for dynamic time stepping seems to be very stable uh, according to message size. We, we now have the two-dimensional stencil pattern. The two-dimensional stencil is believed to uh, loud code serve uh, contention. So uh, here we use uh, the pattern that every load send, sends to one message to four neighbors in a two-dimensional grid. And we can see here that we also obtain very accurate result compared to a measured result, and much better than that of a semi grade. And the dynamic time stepping can obtain up to two orders of magnitude speed up here. Finally, we have application traces. We simulate real batch messages obtained directly from real CSE applications. And we have this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have this nine application traces, and we op obtain very accurate result compared to that of the measured with an average relative error of 9%, except for the narrowed S and 4. And for that of semi grade, it has a much worse relative error than, than us. And in our simulation, the dynamic uh, time stepping eventually increase the relative error, but but with within a uh, within a bound that is acceptable, that is under twenty percent, and the dynamic time stepping still obtains speed up up to one up to one hundred and thirty one folds. So to conclude, the main work of this paper is that we introduce a packed level contention model, which is equivalent to maximum failures for large messages. And on top of this contention model, we implement a fast network simulator for contention modeling, which is accelerated by dynamic time stepping. The drawback of this work comes from three parts. The first is we do not handle message sequences with different start time. The second is uh, the simulator currently assume that every link share the same latency. So we will improve this in the future and parallelize the simulator to see its efficiency. So thank you. Thank you for your attention.